Hello and welcome to Introduction to Management and Strategy. I am Despina Filiu and uh, I am a Senior Lecturer of Strategy and Innovation at Manchester Metropolitan University. This is part of Understanding Business and Entrepreneurship. In this part of the course, we will focus on the more immediate environment surrounding firms and how the actions of some key actors in that environment affect your profitability and strategic decisions. The main ideas presented here come from Porter's model to analyze industry competition. Uh, so, uh, in some ways, this model has not been developed as a tool to inform strategic decision making, uh, but rather it has, ha has been developed as a tool to analyze industries and to identify the extent and main sources of competition in an industry. This is helpful, as potential investors can use this tool to find out which industries are less competitive than others, uh, and that can help them to understand which industries can offer higher profits. This can be also used as a tool to inform decisions on expansion and future growth, as firms can identify sectors or subsectors that are more profitable than others. However, Porter's Five Forces model can also be used to inform strategic decision making. As by understanding the nature and extent of competition in your industry, you can also devise a strategy that will help you to overcome competitive pressures or to negotiate the best alternative that you can obtain given your negotiating power against other main actors that surround you. We will start by stressing one of the core concepts behind Porter's model, which implies that the value of your product and service and how this is perceived by end consumers, it is affected by your competitors' decisions and the actions of some of the main actors that you interact with in your immediate environment, such as your suppliers and buyers. You should take into consideration the actions of all these actors when you are making your new strategic plans, and in the following, we will discuss specifically how the actions of such actors can affect you and how can you can respond to, to their actions. First of all, it is very important that you identify the main businesses that are likely to influence your revenues and profits, or in other words, to define the specific industry or sector that you are in. Businesses that you are in direct competition with can have an immediate effect on how much profit you can make. If there are many businesses offering a product or a service that is very similar to yours, then you are in a very competitive market, as consumers can very easily buy the product of a competitor instead of your own product. One of the most commonly used examples of a nearly perfectly competitive market is the market for agricultural products as there are many farmers producing and selling the same or, the ver or a very similar product. However, if your product is has somehow differentiated, either because of its superior quality or because of any unique and preferential retail positioning you may have, then you can enjoy a competitive edge against other firms. And as a result, you can charge higher profits. For instance, Farmers of organic products are differentiated to conventional farmers and they can charge higher prices. If we take an example from retailing, unique positioning can provide you a competitive edge. For instance, having retail outlets in big shopping centers can provide you uh, with an advantage as retail outlets in such centers are very scarce. These unique attributes of your product need to be promoted to your end consumers so that they can understand and they are clear of how your product provides extra value for the additional price margin that they have to pay. For instance, if you are an organic farmer, they're providing certificates and trademarks that guarantee and prove that your farming is consistent with the principles of organic farming, helps to promote your product and to ensure its your superior value. If you are in the market longer than your competitors, then your reputation through word or mouth or any specific brands and unique identifiers, such as the logos you might have developed over the years, can also become sources of differentiation and give you a competitive edge. These are some of the advantages enjoyed by family businesses, which have been passed down over the generations and have sustained an enduring reputation, which is hard to be matched by newly established firms. 
You can also gain a competitive edge against competitors because your business is able to charge lower prices compared to other firms and still derive some healthy profit margins. This can be because you have invested in effective and efficient product technologies or because you have devised processes that make you work more efficiently compared to other firms in your industry. For example, um, the US-based firm Walmart has managed to expand across the world on the basis of its unique low-cost structure, which the firm enjoys because of a unique combination of activities and processes that coordinate stock ordering and product store, re store replen replenishing, which are combined with centralized warehousing locating at positions very proximate to retail stores. You might be able to enjoy a lower cost structure because you were among the first to establish your business in a specific sector. Being an early mover in a sector allows you to acquire key resources at lower prices. It gives you the opportunity to establish contracts or to make deals with key suppliers and major customers at advantageous prices or to rent facilities and equipment at lower prices compared to competitors. As a result, your costs are lower compared to competitors and you can charge lower prices but still enjoy healthy profit margins compared to other businesses that enter the sector later than you have. This also means that it pays off to recognize opportunities early on and to take the risks that come with being the first to open up a new market or to serve an upcoming and emerging market needs where consumer requirements and the size of the market are not entirely clear yet. Of course, if the demand for your products in the sector that you are in is growing as a whole, then the market becomes less competitive, and there are, as there are more consumers that want to buy your products as well as your competitors' products. This means that you can enjoy higher profits without the need to make high investments on product promotion and advertising. Demand for the product in a sector might be growing either because you are in a new sector and gradually more and more consum consumers adopt a new product as for example the market for mobile phones has recently been. Demand might be growing because your sector provides a superior product or service compared to existing ones that gradually substitutes old products and consumers slowly slowly switch their custom to your sector. Examples of very evident product substitutions come from the music industry and microelectronics. As the MP3 format and the availability of portable MP3 players substituted CD players. Moreover, downloading music online or streaming music through Spotify gradually forced record shops to experience a reduction in profits, with some of them going out of business while others expanding in new markets. For example, the record shop HMV in the UK expanded in live concerts, merchandise sales and in the market for video games. Finally, demand can be growing because digital business can be applied to your sector and can you increase demand by finding new markets online. Another key factor that affects competition and both the amount and the ease of making profits is the relative size of your business compared to your major competitors. If your competitors are of comparable size to yours, then your relative power is more balanced. If, however, the size of their business is much larger than yours, then it means that they can afford to charge more competitive prices by, for example, buying in bulk. They are also very likely to retaliate by cutting down prices if they see that you are adopting strategies that aim to gain over some of their consumers. Another force that can affect your ability to influence the level of, your, of the prices that you charge, it comes from future or potential competitors. Of course, part of this uh, is hypothetical, as at most times it's not clear whether competition will change and in which direction. But by being aware of the potential trends and threats, it can assist you in planning your future strategy in a way that will help you to stop potential competitive threats from becoming real or it can help you to be prepared to combat potential competition early on. Potential competition can come from two main directions. First, it can come from businesses that already exist and offer a product or a service that can be used as a substitute for your product, either because it more or less solves the same problem 
or because it satisfies the same need. A substitute product poses a real threat only when it performs better. For example, it meets consumer needs in a more satisfying way or when it satisfies such needs in more competitive prices. Sometimes products that are very dissimilar can be substitutes. For example, if you are doing business in the confectionery market, then some of your custom comes from consumers that wish to buy a present. And as a result, for that part of your business, any other businesses that produce a product that can be offered as a present can be a substitute. If you recognize that the third of substitution for your product increases or is coming from diverse direction and is difficult to foresee its impact, then there is a wide array of strategies available that you can use to help you prevent from losing business to substitutes. Increasing and intensifying product promotion and product offers, introducing consumer loyalty schemes, and increasing the visibility of your products through social media can help you to prevent or lower the threat of substitutes. The second major source of potential competition is entirely new businesses that want to establish in your industry or sector. This can be businesses that are already in operation in other sectors and want to expand in yours, or it can be businesses that are in the same sector as yours but currently operate in a different geographical location. It can also be that you are facing competition from totally new businesses. Whether potential competitors are already established or not can make a difference on how easily you can preclude them from entering your sector or compete with them once they become established. This is because firms that they are already established have valuable experience, an established name, good image and reputation in other sectors which they can transfer to your sector and these are hard, are hard to compete with. There are several strategies that you can use to lower the threat of potential competition. First, you can invest in anything that can maintain the quality of your product and service to, continue, uh, to ensure continuing consumer satisfaction. Product or service promotions, consumer loyalty schemes, as discussed above, can help in keeping your consumer satisfied and likely to return their custom and not to switch away from you to potential competitors. Alternatively, you can invest in equipment and technologies that make your product offering more price competitive compared to existing or potential alternatives. Being efficient and effective, or the first in the market, can pay off in the future as new competitors cannot easily overtake cost advantages or reputational advantages that you have established in your sector over the years. Your suppliers and the relationship you have established with them can also affect your ability to make a healthy stream of profits. For example, if the market for your main inputs or components you use is populated by many firms, then it's easy for you to find alternative suppliers if you are unhappy with the quality or the price charged by your existing suppliers. This gives you negotiating power over them and it means that, any that at any point in time you can negotiate prices in your favour. Moreover, when your suppliers offer a very standardised input, service or component, then the negotiating power lies with you, as you can very easily switch between suppliers if you are unsatisfied with your existing ones. Of course, it goes without saying that if you have a binding contract with your suppliers or if they have a strong reputation or the compatibility of their components with your product is difficult to re-establish with other suppliers, then your existing suppliers have strong negotiating power over you. This can affect whether you can negotiate better prices with them or not, as you are dependent on them to keep providing you with a product of good quality that meets your specification criteria. In the case that your suppliers have an expansionary agenda and are likely to become a potential competitor, then again they have a higher negotiating power over you because they can always threaten you that they will expand in your sector. In Porter's model, the final force of competition that is exercised upon you is the relative negotiating power of buyers, which can also affect the level and ease of profits made in an industry. This works in a very similar way to supplier bargaining power. 
Indeed, certain characteristics of your buyers, especially in business-to-business relationship, can influence tremendously your ability to obtain a healthy stream of profits. For example, if you are selling your product to other businesses and the number of buyers for your product is very limited and you cannot expand in different markets, then you have, you have very limited negotiating power, especially when there is a high number of businesses selling a product similar to yours. Buyers can switch to other businesses if you try to increase your prices or if your product is not of consistent quality. Especially in such cases, it pays off to try and bind your buy- buyers to your business either by offering price reductions for longer term contracts or by making your product very specific and tailored to the needs of your major p- buyers so that it is difficult for them to switch away from you. If, however, there isn't much room for product differentiation, then your buyers have greater negotiating power over you. Of course, we need to stress that buyers can only exercise such power if you have a high number of competitors where they can switch to. The market for agricultural products is very competitive as there is a high number of farmers selling a product and there, is, there isn't much room for product differentiation. Moreover, there is a much smaller number of buyers when we talk about big firms that they trade agricultural produce. The fact that agricultural produce is sensitive and mainly perishable gives even less negotiating power to farm to farmers. You can apply Porter's Five Forces model to your industry and it will help you to become aware of the nature and direction of competition in your sector. It will help you to become more aware of how to interpret the actions of your competitors, suppliers and buyers and to understand what type of information you need you need to fully appreciate the impact of, of their actions and of how you can analyze such information and use any findings to think into your future strategy. Of course, these forces of power that they are exercised upon you um, they are not independent to your actions. Your actions can very much affect and influence the, the strength of, of these forces. Moreover, in practice, okay, the situation okay, in reality is very much more complex as a lot of these forces are very much um, interrelated and their combined impact can be something um, which is very difficult to respond to. Thank you.